Welcome to Biology for Bastards, teaching biology in the most profane way you've ever seen or heard. I'm your host, John Doty. Thanks for listening. Um, fucking season two, everybody. What the shit? We're ready. We're doing it. Um, this entire season is going to be on evolution, which is going to be fucking amazing because evolution's the best shit there ever is. Um, new this season, I'm going to have videos. Yeah. So this is all going to be set to video that you're going to be able to find on YouTube and on the website. Um, I'll probably just link to the videos on the website. That'll probably be easier. But um, we are based off of the book Evolution, fourth edition by Futayama and Kirkpatrick. All that information is on the website. Um, let's just dive right in. Enough of all this shit. A lot of shit has happened between season one and season two. But we're just going to ignore all that and just go with it. So chapter one is evolutionary biology. What the fuck does that mean? Now, that's a very good question. That's why I asked it. Um, but before we get into what evolutionary biology is, we need to talk about what evolution is. Makes fucking sense. So it comes from the Latin word evolvere. I don't know. I don't speak fucking Latin, but let's go with that, which just means to unfold or to unroll. Um, so it's just this idea that things are going to change over time. That's really all we're talking about. It's descent with modification is really what it comes down to. Um, all that stuff that Darwin said, which we'll get to. Um, this is a lot of the history of evolution in this chapter. So we're going to start with who came up with evolution or what's the history of evolution. And it goes all the way back to like the 400 BC uh, with Plato. And then a little bit later with Aristotle, they had the Scala Naturae. I don't know. It's all fucking Greek or Latin or some bullshit. Um, it means the scale of nature. I can pronounce that because that's English. And with this, they had the idea that species had these fixed properties, that they were permanent and unchanging. So the species that existed were as they existed forever and would be the way they exist forever. Um, and anything else, if there was any change, that would have been an imperfection by God, whichever God they believed in. Um, just everything was created perfectly, unchanging, forever and ever. That was the scale of nature. Some things were, you know, simple. Some things were complex, but everything was as perfect as it needed to be. Then we fast forward like 2000 fucking years. And now we're up to um, Carolus Linnaeus in the 1700s. And he had the system, Systema Naturae, the natural system. And he's the guy who's responsible for binomial nomenclature with um, putting related, quote unquote, related species into genera. And remember, genera is just the plural of genus. Um, genera into orders, so we get the species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, kingdom, and then eventually we would get domains later. Now, when he did this based on their relatedness, and that's quote-unquote relatedness again, um, it was the proximity to the creator's design. So it was still based on God and kind of faith-based in that order, and he was just kind of putting some sense to the creator's design. Now, around that time, geology was a growing field. We have James Hutton, who was Scottish, and we have Charles Lyell, who was, I don't the fuck know, don't really fucking care. He's dead. He died in 1875, so he's been dead for a while. So if I hurt anybody's feelings, not knowing where the fuck Lyell was from, um, fuck you. Um, that was mean. But um, together... They came up with the idea, well, Hutton came up with the idea of deep time that the earth is really fucking old. Lyell kind of came up with the idea of uniformitarianism. And all uniformitarianism says is that the same processes operated in the past as they do now in the present and as they will in the future. So the way volcanoes erupt and lay down lava that turns into rock and makes a new, you know, environment, that's how volcanoes just fucking work. That's just how they work. Okay, so same processes, working now, working forever. That's uniformitarianism. This brings us to this ugly motherfucker with a long-ass name named Jean-Baptiste Pierre Anthony de Monet Chevalier de Lamarck. 
Um, that's probably all wrong. That's French. Um, most people just know him as Lamarck or John Baptiste Lamarck. And he is famous for being really fucking wrong. It's pretty much what it comes down to. He was just fucking wrong. Um, and his big publish, publish, mint, pub, publish. And his big thing that he published, what the fuck ever. I don't even know. Can't think of words. Um, he came up with this idea that came to be known as Lamarckism, which is the inheritance of acquired characteristics. Um, saying that things, different organisms just spontaneously came about and started at the bottom of this chain of being. And as they used their bodies, they would become engorged with this nervous fluid. And this nervous fluid would change their body in ways where if they used it, it would build up. If they didn't use that body part, this nervous fluid would leave it. And the body would change as a result. So those are the acquired characteristics or traits that they picked up during their lifetime. And the inheritance of acquired characteristics just means you can pass those traits onto your offspring and that they could then pass it on to their offspring. So that's all fucking wrong. And we'll get into why that's wrong kind of as we get further into everything, but it's just fucking wrong. Just wrong. Lamarck's wrong. Okay, this brings us to Darwin, Chucky D, Charles Robert Darwin, 1809 to 1882. Um, now, he was the son of a physician. He was a spoiled little bitch. Um, I'm comfortable enough to say that about him because he's dead. Um, he did study medicine for a while, but he hated the sight of blood. And if you ever practiced medicine in the early 1800s, it was pretty much all blood. And then he studied to be a member of the clergy, and that didn't suit him. And that takes us to um, 1831, when he was 22 years old. He was invited along to serve as the naturalist on the HMS Beagle. Um, he was to be friends with the captain. Um, the captain, you know, couldn't associate with the crew because it was the 1800s. So he needed a buddy of equal status. And that's what Darwin did. So they set sail on December 27th, 1831, and took him five fucking years. They were going to map the coast of South America, but they actually, you know, they ended up sailing all the way around the world because once they got to one side of South America, they had to come back home. So they came back in October 2nd of 1836, so not quite five years, but just about. Um, and along the way, being the naturalist, he was keeping track of all the nature that they saw, the different animals and plants and fossils they turned about. He was just in charge of keeping track of all the nature. And upon return... This ornithologist friend of Darwin's named John Gould pointed out the differences in birds that he collected, that Darwin collected, on the Galapagos Islands. So the very famous Galapagos finches. And that got Darwin to think. And wheels started to turn on his noggin. And then in 1838, so what is that? A couple, couple years later, two, th three years later, after they got back, um... Darwin read Thomas Malthus's, um, an essay on the principle of population. Um, Malthus was this British economist who basically is famous for this idea of struggle for existence or the struggle for existence, that there's all these people being born, populations are increasing. And as a result, there was going to be a fight, um, for food, a fight for territory, just a lot of, um, everything out there kind of that would limit the population as it became more crowded. So uh, that was, you know, just another piece of the puzzle. Then years later, he started, he wrote this private, Darwin did, wrote this private essay starting to outline the theory of natural selection. So he had already started to put something together in like about eight years time. And then we fast forward 12 years later to 1856 when he's 47. Now keep in mind, he came back from the trip when he was 27. So 20 years later, he started to work on this book and he planned on titling it just Natural Selection, short and sweet, um, which if you know anything about Darwin and his writing, you know, that's a fucking lie. I realized I hadn't swore for a while. That just kind of whatever. So Natural Selection would be a beautiful name for a book, but that's not what he went with when he finally published. Um, and then in 1858, at the age of 49, so 22 years later, he got this manuscript from this guy, Alfred Russell Wallace. 
Now, Wallace, he was a biologist and he was working in the Malay archipelago, which is over in like Indonesia, the Philippines, that area, north of Australia, south of Southeast Asia. Uh, and he came up independently with the idea of natural selection. The story says he had malaria and during a fever dream, he was like struck with this inspiration that natural selection was a thing. And being a British gentleman in the mid 1800s, he wrote to Darwin because people knew Darwin was kind of toying around with this, this idea, um, wrote him, basically said, hey, I just came up with this idea. Um, people tell me you're coming up with something with it, too. Maybe we should do something about it. So that leads to November 24th, 1859. Um, Darwin, at the age of 50, published what was meant to be the abstract for the book Natural Selection that he was planning on writing. Um, this abstract ended up being like almost 500 fucking pages long. And I made the reference that if he just titled the book Natural Selection, it would have been really funny knowing how he worked. Here's the full fucking title of the origin of species <clears throat> on the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. That's a whole fucking title. There's a fucking comma in the title. It's a mouthful on the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. If you don't take a breath before you say it and you're not ready, you will run out of breath by the time you finish the title. It's a long fucking title. Um, but with it, that was the game changing, uh, publishment. Is that a word? Publishment? Is that what I was trying to think of earlier? I don't fucking know. Whatever. Um, now, when it comes to Darwin's theory, there are two parts to it. There's descent with modification and there's natural selection. So that being said, it is a variational theory of change, which means the frequency of a very the frequency of a variant form, so just the variation, is going to be increasing within the population from one generation to the next. This is in direct contrast with Lamarck's transformational theory, which is saying that individuals change. So it's the difference between saying with Lamarck that individuals are changing to just the frequency of this form is what's going to change. So that's the variational theory that Darwin was talking about. And Darwin's theory had five parts to it. Um, the first one, very simple, characteristics of organisms change over time. That's all there is, just they will change. Um, the second part is pretty much common descent and just organisms, organisms share a common descent. They came from the same thing. Thirdly, gradualism um, is just that Organisms change by small steps. So it's not this rapid, giant leap where like suddenly they have wings out of arms. That's not fucking how it works. That would be bullshit. It's just baby changes is how things change. Um, the fourth part, fourth part of his theory is that it's a populational change. It's not an individual change, but we already said that. That was the last fucking slide. Um, populational change is that evolution happens by changes in the frequency of the variant kinds, those variations, those various forms um, of individuals within a population. And then lastly, uh, natural selection, which is accounting for all the presence of all the adaptations that exist within the population. So those are the five parts to Darwin's theory. Uh, we have change over time, common descent, gradualism, populational change, and then natural selection. Now, Darwin came up with all this shit on his own, well, you know, kind of on his own, but in the 1850s and before without any knowledge of genetics or anything like that. Um, but we needed to understand genetics for this, for people to kind of get on board because the old idea on how things worked was this idea of a blending inheritance where characteristics were inherited by fluids and offspring were going to be intermediate to the parents, which kind of makes sense. Like you could see where they would come up with that. It's fucking wrong, but it kind of makes sense. Now, uh, when the work of Gregor Mendel came about, which actually he published it in 1866. So around the time Darwin was doing all his stuff, like right after, but um, it went really 
pretty much unnoticed until 1900. By then, Darwin was dead and all that stuff. Um, and if you don't understand the work of Mendel, he was the whole idea of particulate inheritance. So inheritance was transferred by particles, which pass unaltered from one generation to the next. And those particles we now know are genes um, found on chromosomes, but then they didn't have any sense of chromosomes and genes. He was the guy kind of coming up with the genes. Um, Mendel was. But, uh, yeah. Now, after Darwin, because I said Mendel's work got discovered in 1900, after Darwin had died, after all this stuff, Darwin's book on the origin of species by blah, 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 fucking long title. It's a really boring book if you've ever tried to read it. Um, commas for days. Uh, but after Darwin published his book, Part of it was pretty much widely accepted right off the bat. And that was the descent with modification, that things came from common ancestors with a little bit of change. And when Darwin wrote it, he was talking about like all birds came from a common bird ancestor and mammals may have came from a common mammalian ancestor and all this. So he wasn't talking about like there was one organism and that turned into every type of organism there is today. He wasn't going that far, but he was saying that there was some sort of common ancestor in the past and that things changed from there. And that part was pretty much widely accepted right off the bat. Now, other people, the other part of his idea, um, natural selection, was rejected for nearly 60 years. Um, and in that time, there were a bunch of other theories that kind of came about. There was neo-Lamarckism, um, all based on the inheritance of acquired characteristics. Going back to that, it was still fucking wrong. Okay. Then there was orthogenesis, which is a straight line evolution, uh, where variation was directed towards a, fit, a fixed goal. And it's kind of Lamarckian in a sense, where species were evolving in a predetermined direction, driven by this internal drive um, towards this fixed goal. And we know that's wrong. Okay. There was mutationist theories. So once genetics kind of started to get on board, um, and people started to understand genetics, they were saying that um, mutant forms were entirely new species. So there was no need for natural selection because you had these mutants that were popping up and they were doing their own thing. They were their own new species. So you didn't need natural selection. And then that led to neo-Darwinism. Um, which is this idea that adaptive evolution is caused by natural selecting acting on Mendelian genetic variation. And that's pretty much what is thought today. We have natural selection acting on genetic variation that is inherited through Mendelian genetics. Um, and that's where a lot of the big stuff came from with these neo, neo, ugh, fuck, neo Darwinist is what I was trying to fucking say. And like, whatever. Um, and then as we got even better understanding of genetics, um, that kind of led us to coming up with two main divisions of evolution. We have microevolution and there's macroevolution. So when we talk about microevolution, we are talking about the origin of new species. So things like mutations and gene flow, natural selection and drift causing evolution. And then we've got macroevolution, which is like big fucking shit, um, evolution of major alterations of higher taxes. So that's just anything above a species level. So evolution of genera or families or orders, that's our macroevolution stuff. Now, there are some basic ideas to all of biological evolution, and we're going to get into some really complicated shit over the course of this season. So this is just shit that is like, well, day one, fundamental, like if you do not understand this, you're going to be fucking screwed later. Um, so first up is that phenotype, your physical features and everything, how things are expressed, is distinct from genotype, basic genetics. Um, second one is that acquired characteristics are not fucking inherited. It's not how it works. It's just not. Okay, next one, that hereditary variations are based on particles, and those particles are your genes. Like I said, genes found on chromosomes. And then that 
the genetic variation that we see is based on random mutation. It is not mutation that has arisen by a need. So there's no like, well, gee, we really need something that can fly. So let's evolve wings. That's not, no, fuck you. Wrong. It's just random ass mutations happening that just happen to play a role. So those are some basic fundamental principles when we start talking evolution. Okay, right, keep, keep going on those. Uh, we add that evolution is the change in the population, not a fucking individual. Individuals do not fucking evolve. They just don't. Okay, but the population will. Um, kind of expanding on that. When we talk about the changes in allele frequencies within a population, they can be random changes and have things like drift or um, anything like that. Or they can be non-random and have things like selection going on. So the changes can be random or they can be non-random. Both are totally fine. Um, but natural selection is, even though that's the non-random changes in little frequencies, it can account for both slight and great differences and can alter populations beyond the original range of variations. What that means is, say we've got a range of numbers, 1 through 10, natural selection can make it make 11 possible or 12 possible. Um, just beyond the original range by selecting for something, it can change that whole population to something that wasn't in existence at all before. Okay, a little bit more fundamental principles. Um, usually, populations are going to have a lot of genetic variation. If you just look at and the bigger the population is, the more genetic variations there's going to be. And those little variations are going to help species evolve um, by offering more opportunities for higher fitness. Okay. Um, differences in the species have arisen and evolved by small steps. That's that gradualism that we talked about earlier. It's not these giant leaps from arms to wings in like one or two generations. It's a very slow, very long process to get these major differences. And then a species is a group where it's defined. And we'll get into this in a much later chapter about there's a bunch of different types of species or definitions of species. Um, but the one that we're going to work with the most is that a species is a group of potentially interbreeding individuals that do not exchange genes with other such groups. So they kind of stick to themselves. And I think this is our... We're almost at the very end. So we're wrapping stuff up here soon. A um, couple more fundamental principles before we go. Speciation usually occurs by genetic differentiation in geographically isolated populations. Hopefully the, all those words make sense. Um, if not, you can go back to season one and there's an episode. I don't remember which one. You can fucking find it on your own. Um, but it's just... Geographically isolated just means they are physically separated from each other. And that's so speciation usually occurs by the buildup of genetic differentiation um, in those geographically isolated populations. Hey, I've already said this one earlier. Higher taxa arise by sequential accumulation of small differences. So that's, you know, you get your genera, you get your families, your orders by having a bunch of little changes in a species turning into something brand new. And then when you put everything together, you get this great fucking tree of life. Now, last the last three things. When it comes to studying evolution, there are three things that you've got to keep in mind. So everything I just went through were just like fundamental principles. This is just like the basis of biological evolution. But these three things are really important that we as humans kind of put on evolution or we assume when we're studying it. Um, one is that causes are causes are not seen. We don't see the causes of things. We just infer. So we don't know why things are happening. We just infer the reason to them. And it's very, 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 very important to note that the natural world is amoral. There are no morals. It doesn't mean that there are it's moral moral, eh, maybe. There's just no morals. It is amoral. 
There is not a good, there is not bad, there is natural. And that kind of leads to the naturalistic fallacy. Um, and that's where people who think that if something is natural, it's good. That's not always the case. But that's it. That's the end. So, episode one of 24 for season two in the books. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the start of this. It's going to be a lot different, a lot more focused, a lot more in-depth than last season was. Um, if you have any recommendations, you know, hit me up. I'm on all the social media, at Bio for Bastards on everything, Facebook, Twitter. Those are the big ones, but we're everywhere. Um, you can check us out at biologyforbastards.com where you'll find links to everything. Um, there's merch if you want to hook yourself up with some threads. People still say that. Um, or if you want shirts or hats or hoodies, if you don't say threads anymore, they're there. Um, please don't forget to rate, review, subscribe. Um, go to Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review and give us a little shout out. I check it periodically to see what people are saying. Um, so please spread the word, give the good news, um, or give me good news. And let's see, our intro and outro music is a song Feeling Good by Purple Planet Music. And with that, I've been John Doty, and this has been Biology for Bastards. And until next time, thanks for listening. <laughs>